Craig Ritchie blocked me. Will he see this? It doesn't matter! I don't know. Does he see my stuff after he blocks me? Will I see him at the CrossFit Games? Will he even talk to me at the CrossFit Games? It doesn't matter! Yo, yesterday I put up a video talking about the fact that I am verified real CrossFit media. And in the description, I made a little bit of a scatter thing about how long I believe it took me to put all of that together over the course of three or four months and 188 now 189 videos, 750, 800 hours of work, plus all of the back end work. I consider it a full time job on top of my job, which is now just individualized training. Remember, I sold my stake in my affiliate, and I believe that there are a few reasons that I am somebody who can do the thing that I'm doing right now. I don't have the affiliate anymore. When I worked at the affiliate, they were 80 to 100 hour weeks. And anybody who owns an affiliate and was in the position that I ran that affiliate and you know what I'm talking about. When you got home, there wasn't a chance that you could turn on a freaking camera and start talking into it. All you wanted to do was eat food and go to sleep so that you could repeat your day and hopefully get a workout or two in because God forbid you're the head of an affiliate and you are practicing what you preach trying to get a workout in. So you're trying to find every second of sleep you can get so that the circle goes around and around and you are aren't turning into a corpse while you're running the thing that you're trying to preach health and wellness about. While I was at the affiliate, there was always the purpose of trying to be as precise as possible with the things that I would say. You go to the TV screens or the whiteboard to brief the workout. You understand that you only had so much of their attention span before they were off or thinking about the bathroom or worrying about work or before or after. And I would try to get everything as precise and into a minute or two as possible. And I know that that's also something that a lot of people understand. It's something that I try to push in into the YouTube videos. I know that they're about 10 minutes long, but in that 10 minutes, I want them to be as impactful and I want you to take away as much as possible. I will let you know that that likely isn't going to be what's happening today. And while you might think that I have entertainment to my YouTube videos on occasion, and if that's something you like, cool, but I don't want you to say Andrew's talking about the fact that everything he has is in worth value and then this is all just hogwashy, riff raff drama bullshit. That is about Craig Ritchie blocking me on YouTube. Blocking on YouTube is very interesting and I figured out that Nate Edwards said had done it. I believe somebody in my Instagram messages said that they couldn't find a comment that I had made on his channel. And what happens is they just make you invisible to everybody else. And that's okay. It's his channel. He can do what he wants with his YouTube channel. It doesn't matter. This is not the first time that I've been in the, he can do what he wants with his YouTube channel realm. One of the weirdest things about doing this right now is that there are a handful of people that I've never met and will be meeting likely at the CrossFit Games who know who I am, but I will walk up to them in person and I have to really try to remember where I know them from, when did I talk to them, what did I say? Because at this point in time, it's almost 17,000 people on the YouTube channel who might watch a video who may have seen my face that I may not have seen before and it's going to be weird for me. What was very weird for me in the beginning was making a video where when I was at the affiliate, it, I was doing the try to make everybody happy. I didn't want to make a single member upset. It became incredibly hard during COVID where people were so strongly opinionated about things like, I'm going to wear a mask and I'm not going to wear a mask and they're button heads and then they're like, Andrew, you yell at them. No, Andrew, you yell at them. It's a large part of why I left the affiliate. I couldn't deal with it because you know what I wanted? I wanted everyone to be in great shape and that's it. So what I did and this is why I think that I'm unique is I still have the exact same care about everybody in the CrossFit community that I had when I was at the affiliate. But from where I sit, they just go into my comment section. They don't walk up to me in person and get all angry and insist that I do things. And I haven't had worked with whomever might leave a negative comment in there or have a comment about somebody else. And that was the worst part of it. Somebody would talk mad shit about somebody for whatever opinion they may have had. And then you as the affiliate owner would have to try to defuse that because everyone's paying members, but they're always working out right next to one another. And somebody would do some sort of persnickety shit to somebody. And then this person would be upset. And then they both come up to you separately. And then you'd sit there and say, well, you shouldn't have done that. And you should have done that. And you're just playing the principal. And it drove me nuts. And I would bet that a large majority of you out there who are coaching or have ran or are running a CrossFit affiliate know exactly what I'm talking about. And when I was in that position, I did everything I could to make everybody happy. And it took a lot of time and a lot of my, what is it? willpower, energy, a lot of my being to be able to do that over and over and over and over again. It's what you signed up for. It's what I like to do. And when I make a video where I strongly, strongly throw out my opinions on the internet, I'm always thinking about the people in the affiliate who might have never seen that side of me. And now they're seeing it on the internet for the first time. They're like, whoa, I never knew Andrew would say that. I didn't know Andrew swore that much. This is 100% me that you're seeing on the internet right now. If you don't like it, I understand that there are going to be 
a lot of people who don't like the way that I go about doing things. But in that micro system that was the CrossFit affiliate, I wanted everyone to love every bit of everything and everyone that had to do with that affiliate. It started at the top, in my opinion, and that was me. And if I wasn't the beacon that everyone was looking to saying, well, if he can like everybody and we all like him, then why can't we like each other? I would hope that that would be the case as well on the internet, but I know that that is extremely wishful thinking. And I hope that everybody just likes me for the way that I am. With all of that, one of the first times that I've ever had a negative interaction with somebody on the internet was in relation to Craig Ritchie. And it was a former member of my affiliate and the former member of my affiliate reached out to me and they go, you son of a bitch, she's just trying to make a living. His videos are all so good. You're never going to make a name for yourself talking shit about these people. And this was in response to a post that I made on my story on Instagram back when I had, I don't know, 2,000 followers. I looked at it and it had 900 views on it, which isn't very many. And of those 900 views, it was a former member of my affiliate that came out and they go, all you do is tear people down, go fuck yourself. And it was all because I put up a bit about Craig Ritchie saying he's trying to promote his products. So the reason I painted all of this in a certain light was because one, I have a way about the way that I do things. When I was at the affiliate, I didn't want to try to pull things out of my members, every single cent that they could be. So if I had 150 members, I didn't want to charge $35 for a t-shirt because it would make me an extra $5 a t-shirt. You charge $30 or $25 for a t-shirt. So you're making a little bit because you should make money as a business owner on apparel. It's one of the best ways to drive an additional revenue stream. But just like everybody, there's like a risk reward. And if you make things $40, you understand that you're trying to suck them dry and they know that it goes with everything. So yeah, I'll admit when I used to watch Craig Ritchie's videos, I thought that they were super substantial. There's a whole lot of good content that would come out of them. And he still does have good content. And between that good content, he sits at his desk and they'll say, buy this, hustle bid, do that, blah, blah, blah. And I think that I've out of my 187 videos that I put up, maybe made two or three where they circle around a shirt that I've put out, the no rep shirt. And a lot of the time my hand is forced, like Noble will send me a cease and desist letter. And it's like, what am I going to do? Not make a video on a cease and desist letter. I had after 150 or so of these, I made an episode on my programming because there was a dick load of people in my comment sections, in my Instagram messages saying, Hey, what does your program look like? What does it look like? What does it look like? And after a certain point in time, it would just be stupid to not make a video like that. And I didn't get any negative feedback from that. And I don't know, maybe he's the exact same way. So maybe when he's promoting his hustle made apparel, or maybe when he's promoting his products, or he's talking about the Romwad app, or maybe it's GoWad, whichever wad stretchy app that he has. And he talks about all the time. Maybe it's because there are a whole bunch of people in his Instagram messages asking about it. And if so, that's cool. That's something that's never going to be discussed after he blocks me on YouTube. He's never reached out to me. He's got the 300 or 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. And that's cool. Good for him. He built it up during that time where I used to watch all of his stuff. I'm a subscriber to his channel. And as a subscriber, I like to watch the stuff like Matt Frazier. It's a 400 pound jerk or watch him do things with Rich Froning in his barn. Watch some of his behind the scenes stuff at the CrossFit games. But every time I see something bad or whatever on the internet, I always try to lean into it. So if I were to leave a comment on his YouTube video, I would want him to respond and maybe poke back at me. And maybe that isn't his style. And that's also okay. I'm just never really going to understand the whole blocking thing because I get blocked by someone on Instagram. And now it's up to like 10 or I don't know how many people have blocked me on Instagram because it's only once people send me something that it's like, this person's unavailable. I go, all right, who was that person you sent me? And then I figure out who it was, this person, that person, whole bunch of people have blocked me on Instagram. It's harder for me to find it on YouTube. Here's what this looks like on YouTube. Okay, so here's how this thing works. We're gonna go to YouTube, and I'm sure I've looked him up recently. So there's Craig Ritchie. We go to Craig Ritchie's channel, and what you're gonna see is on this most recent video, you pull it up, turn it, pause it, scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see that I put up a comment. I go back time and time again to see how the comment's doing, so I wanna interact with a couple of the people, but what you'll see is that there's no interaction. This guy, Phil, has nine likes. His comment is 21, 83. I figured that there'd be some sort of interaction on there, right? And it has none. Then I got thinking about the time that I noticed Nate Edwardson had blocked me on YouTube. So what I do next is I open up an incognito tab. When you open up an incognito tab, it no longer knows who you are. So I go to YouTube and then I'm going to go type in Craig Ritchie. Go to his channel. Pause that because it's loud. Videos. Go to that same old video. Scroll get down. Moving. There's what an the ad now because I've got YouTube Premium. I tell everybody to get YouTube Premium so that you can go away from the ads. Here we go. Go in here, and I do not even see my comment. It was on the most recent one, but it's not here. This is where it was before. 
you scroll a little bit you don't see anything nope nope still no comment no andrew hiller what that means is that he put me on one of those filters where nobody can see my comment on his youtube channel other than me which means that he blocked me on his youtube channel keep on scrolling you're not going to see my name anywhere in there if i do one of those control finds control f hiller hero nothing popping up for control f hiller if i keep on going so that more stuff populates nothing 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 no comment it's not even buried it's just non-existent not there anywhere nothing i don't even see people that i really know on here what else do we get there's a lot of comments on here good work craig a lot of comments oh there's a hiller go to it where is it there we go looks like hiller is helping with the edits i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing i'm going to assume that is a diss but who knows either way name is mentioned it sees that the filter works you can't find my name anywhere because i am blocked so the gist of all of this is that while I know that I said I try to put as much good stuff into about a 10 minute video as possible, sometimes I get longer, this one will likely be longer. There isn't that much substance to this video other than the fact that it is just a drama for fun. Maybe you like to wake up and hear something that's going on in the CrossFit world. Craig Ritchie blocked me on the internet. Will he see this? It doesn't matter! I don't know. Does he see my stuff after he blocks me? Will I see him at the CrossFit Games? Will he even talk to me at the CrossFit Games? Those are the questions that I am now asking myself. Why do you hate me? I leave a comment somewhere and now all of a sudden you don't like me anymore whatever i've made a whole bunch of friends through certain conversations in relation to certain things that i used to poke at and pick at because it was a whole misunderstanding i didn't understand what it was or why they did things the way that they do them and i've brought that up with craig already maybe i don't understand the way that he goes about doing things and maybe he does them for a certain reason it's not he doesn't have to tell me those things. He's likely very busy. He's got, what, freaking 100 times the subscribers that I've got, 100 plus times the subscribers. I can only imagine being 100 times more busy. But after all this, all I try to do is I imagine what I was like before I was making the freaking videos and say, hey, if I was watching my videos, what is it that I would want to hear, said, and how would I want it addressed, how quickly, how compact, all that crap. If there's anything that I can do better, I'm always trying to learn, and that's what the comment section is for. So I'm always going through my own comment sections. Help me get better. That's what it's all about. If you didn't see my Instagram post on Friday, we're wearing the no rep shirts at the CrossFit Games. I believe that's the fourth, maybe it's the fifth of August. So do that if you've got one. Andrew Hiller out.